Good day everyone, Matt Elder here and today I'm going to show you how to make a Triceratops out of Lego. This is about five and a half thousand pieces all up and is about 92 studs long. This was done as the main centerpiece or design element for my son's recent birthday party. His favourite dinosaur is a Triceratops, as a Triceratops. To get the colour to fit in with the birthday party, I asked my wife sort of what colour scheme should go for and she just said green. So we went through with this one and we've got some dark green, normal green, lime green, uh, sand green, olive green. The underside's got some dark orange, some tan, uh, bits of black and the main bone parts here are all done in a sand blue. Around this video you also have available the instruction guide so you can go through and build this. I'll also include the what's called an LDR file which is the digital version of how it was built and it's all done in layers so using that you can actually go through and completely do this all yourself. Now it's always a bit tricky to get a sense of scale with these things so let's compare it to some other Legos. Here we have some models to give a bit of size comparison. Of course the classic little one is the minifig figure. Uh, this is a Master Wu one so you can sort of see relative there how sort of tall it is. On the bottom here we've actually got three 32 by 32 green base plates so you can sort of see it is quite a, a long model. Um, compared with some of the other sculptural type ones which have been able to build, this is a custom Master Wu. Um, so, you know, it's roughly about the same height. And a custom cupcake holder comes out to about the size of its back. And around the video, you also have instructions on how I've made these. So if you want to build those, alternatively, do that as well. Whereas compared to the Statue of Liberty, which was released in the early 2000s, this is me doing a white version of it, usually it's a sand green. It only comes up to about tablet height there on how tall it is. Or in comparison to some of the Lego car models, we've got a Ghostbusters Lego car down here, which is slightly larger than a normal car, but again, just gives you a bit of an idea in terms of sound. Now through the magic of editing, we can get this all gone. And we're back. Now I'm going to go through and show a time lapse of how this is all put together. So if you're following through, you'll be able to see how it goes and get a sense of the challenges involved in building a creation such as this. For this build, part management was a real challenge. So what we've done is use some of our 44 drawers to go through and pre-sort and pre-store all the different components, done into the different colors and into the different sizes. This isn't all the pieces, as during the build, the ones which were short came in different orders. Get started with our 32 by 32 base plate. Initially, go go through and count out the parts for each step, but as time went on, there was just too many parts and it just became too cumbersome. It just became faster once I got into a rhythm to remember where the different drawers, different sizes and different colors were and just grab them as I needed. The dinosaur party theme was settled months in advance and I was just thinking, oh, I'll just do a Tyrannosaurus or something like that. So I'd been mulling over a Tyrannosaurus design for months in my head and having a good think about it and had most of it sorted. Then I thought I'd just better confirm with my son at which point he told me that his favourite dinosaur was a Triceratops and he'd really like a Triceratops. So a silly rookie mistake of not confirming with the client what their actual brief was. It gave me about a week and a half to design it, source the bits, build it and put it all together. Let's just say it didn't get finished till midnight of the night before and the party was the next morning. As I was building the leg stumps, the base plate itself remained pretty flexible. This might come back to bite me when I tried to move it. And maybe I should be building a solid base like there is in the Statue of Liberty Lego set. But once I put in these Technic 1x16 pieces with holes, with studs double jointed, it gave the model a lot of rigidity and all of a sudden it was very solid. For the build itself, I just wanted to keep it with simple, solid bricks and not get too fancy or complicated. Which I used with Technic pieces, which were the bricks with holes in them and some pins. I also used some 4x6 Technic pieces with open centers. They're shown here in blue. They were placed in such a way that the weight would then be taken from the main part of the body and transferred straight down through the legs to try to give it maximum stability. I also used 2x4 bricks with pins as shown in gray here. This helped keeping the frame rigid and transferring the weight from the upper part of the body into the frame and then down to the legs to the ground. This was one of the trickier parts of the build when you're bridging from the legs to the underbelly because as you're trying to join it and fit all the pieces in between you've got really small tolerances and gaps. So you had small spaces to get one by one bricks into and then because you didn't have much on top you had to make sure you had your hand on the top side to make sure that the top brick didn't pop off. Once you got a few more layers on however it became really really strong so the initial weakness then was strengthened. Here adding in another Technic frame which goes all the way out to the tail and then all the way 
So a bit like a seesaw or a teeter totter, you've got the head part being balanced by the tail. This is most likely completely over designed, but I just didn't have time to build a prototype and try to test out different combinations and weights and balancing. If it didn't work, I didn't get a second chance at it. I was worried about sections shearing apart just to its own self weight. The head with the large frill has a lot of weight in it, so I needed to make sure that that wasn't going to fall off. With so much weight in the head, also worried about it flipping over as the head goes to the ground and there's not enough weight in the backside and the tail to counterbalance and keep it horizontal. The final model weighed about 7 kilograms or 15 pounds, so it's relatively heavy. As a comparison, the Statue of Liberty Lego sculpture set is about 4 kilograms or 9 pounds. Admittedly, that Statue of Liberty set is quite hollow as you build it up and more of a shell. Here we built another Technic frame for the tail. So you now have two Technic frames in the tail and bricks in between, which helped gave it a nice, really rigid structure to it and make sure it didn't flex. This meant you could pick it up either underneath the tail or the neck or under the belly and you were never concerned about it coming apart. It was a really quite solid frame. I designed it in such a way that you had an outer skin and an internal solid core. At times I may have gotten a little too economical with the outer skin. And the inner core made up of the orange and red bricks is probably way too much and could be quite easily hollowed out. Deciding on the scale of this Triceratops was a balancing act between how many parts are you going to be using and then also getting enough definition for the model to actually look decent and have a presence about itself. It ended up at about 92 studs long. At 64 studs when I was looking at it, it just didn't feel like there's going to be enough definition in the model. And then when I was looking at it at 128 studs, you're probably sitting up around 10,000 pieces. So it would have been a bit bigger, but the piece count would have blown out and become really expensive and time consuming to build. It ended up the size of a large fat cat. It ended up at around 5,500 bricks. So time-wise anticipated it would take as long as some of the larger commercially available Lego sets with those sorts of piece counts. Design-wise, the Triceratops is asymmetrical, so it's not like you're building the same thing on both sides. Having done a bit of sculpture, I wanted it so no matter what angle you'd be viewing it at, it would be a unique view. Beyond my wife's Make It Green mandate, I wanted to make the colours vibrant and impressionistic, which works well in Lego plastic and also for the intended kids party audience. There are about six different shades of green and yellow. The ridge of its back is a dark green, which leads into the reverse side of the frill being a dark green. This helps push the focus onto the front of the face and the head, particularly when you look at it head on. The underbelly is tan, dark tan, and dark orange predominantly. The toenails are tan to help try to give a little bit of detail down in the lower foot. The three main horns are done in a sand blue, along with the smaller bony horns protruding out from the frill. Eyes have been understated with a small one by one black brick. Provided around this video is the source LDR file which I used to build this. I mainly used a program called LDCAD which can be downloaded free off the internet. As the video shows this is mainly built up in layers. Each of the 53 steps represents a layer. Steps 20 through 23 show you how to build up the mouth region. With the bricks in the LDR file shown in the speckled black copper color, this can actually be done in any color as it's the internal core. In the video I've done it mostly in orange, red and a bit of blue. There are a few of the speckled black copper pieces which do poke through to the skin but they'll be pretty easy to spot once you're building them. So don't make these too much of a contrasting color unless that's the effect you're going for. The PDF provided is more a guide than a full set of instructions, mainly because I haven't been able to find a program yet which will generate the instructions, but doesn't crash once you load the model into it. I've tried using LPUB and LPUB 3D, but neither of these seem to be able to handle the file. So if you know of a program which will be able to handle this Triceratops model, please get in touch, or even if you are able to build the instructions yourself, I'd love to hear from you. You may notice here I started focusing on the head and finishing off the face. After building all day, I started to realize I was probably going to be running out of pieces of certain colors, and that was concerning. As it was the night before, and I needed to have it done the next morning, near me is the Blue Water Lego store with a pick-a-brick wall, but I knew the colors that I was using were not the standard ones and likely to be on the pick-a-brick wall. Luckily, they did have the lime, and they did have sand green 1x2 tiles, so if I put three of these together, I'd get my brick that I needed in sand green. Phew! Here we have the final model.
it can be a very challenging build because as you're building up and fanning out you then get to a point sometimes where you've got to come back down and interlock with other pieces it was a hit at the party with both little kids and big kids my son was telling the other kids how his daddy built it all by himself which sounded more like daddy needs help building lego rather than the intended meaning of building the whole things without any sort of instructions from scratch the whole thing to design and build probably took somewhere in the 20 to 30 hour range it was constantly sort of being iterative on the fly so it's hard to pin down an exact number of hours as i was finishing up the build it started to occur to me that i hadn't figured out how exactly i was going to transport this thing i'd made it rigid and never thought to make the horns detachable which are always going to be the weakest point a few towels wrapped around it in the back of the car and it made it there safely in one piece surprisingly enough the building guide and ldr file will be found on my website www.mattelder.com I'd love to see any models or variations you build from this so feel free to send me links or pictures at matt at mattelder.com or feel free to get in touch if you'd like any custom Lego mocks or other things designed please share like and subscribe this video as it's always great creating these videos and seeing that people really respond to them here are some other videos you might really enjoy and check out. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego.